Oh yeah. So let's say you have some sort of basic level that's built as a grid map, and you want to place some tiles, but uh, the tiles don't really have too much to them. But you can place them like so. It's sort of like boom, 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 boom. Yeah. The problem with this is that cells in grid maps do not have code attached to them. In order to instance scenes, you would have to instance them in the scene tree. But that can get complicated and tedious to edit really quickly. So here's a way you can get around all the scene tree editing bullcrap. I'm going to do a similar thing to what I did in the tile map in a previous video. What I'm going to do is to instance scenes through a script by using the preload function built into Godot. So let's see, uh, grid map. I'll just uh, name a grid map here. Let's say we have like a couple of scenes right here. Here's my player scene. I'll have name player for some reason. So I'm gonna go over three types of instancing, which will be an NPC, a player, a light source, and yeah, that's it. So it doesn't really matter with the way we're gonna do all this stuff. All we're gonna do is this instance, we could literally instance any scene into the grid map. That's what's nice about this, and we'll get at the position of each tile we do. So it could be a sprite 3D, it could be a light, or, and it could be a player. It could be anything. It could be, even be another wall if you really want to. But yeah, this is pretty sweet about this. The next thing we're going to do is add three const variables and use the preload function to load all them in. So I'll preload the player scene, the light scene, and the enemy scene. Yeah. You need to use constants to make these work with the preload function. And all you need to do is just right click on whichever scene you want, copy its path, and then put them into uh, quotations within the preload uh, parameter. So now we got all these things preloaded in, the next thing we need to do is somehow instance them. So here is a problem with the grid map. If you notice, it has get use cells, but no get use cells by ID. Look, I'll look up the, um, the tile map documentation. So. That's what this one has. Get used cells by ID right after that. Get used rec 2. I guess they don't have that. So you could probably like make these functions by yourself. But I'm going to make the get used cells by ID one by myself right now. Before we get started. So here's my get used cells by ID. And then we want to put some type of ID type int. And for now, let's put pass so I don't keep getting an error message. So what we're going to use in the get use cells by ID function is get use cells. So yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to put all the use cells in a variable called cells. Now we got all of our cells contained in one little package. So after that, um, we are going to iterate through it for I in cells. Get use cells returns an array of vector threes, and we're going to iterate through them. This will be nice because each i in our for loop will be a vector 3 and that vector 3 will be a coordinate within our map. We are also going to make an array that is empty. We'll put all the use cells of a certain id into that empty array. So next we're going to have to check if a spot is being used by a certain id. And we could do that by looking at the documentation. So what you want to do if you want to find an id is to use get cell item, put some um, coordinates in. XYZ coordinates and then you, it returns an int which is the ID from the thing. I think it'll say that if the cell is empty. Yeah, invalid cell item will be returned. So that pretty much tells you that it's going to return an ID because invalid cell item means that it's a, that's an ID called invalid cell item. But yeah. Then we're going to put i.x which is our uh, coordinate of the given ID, i.y, and i.z. So yeah. Now we got all that and it's returning the ID of the cell that takes up that spot. So let's say if it's equal to ID, then we want to append to the array, and that would be, ah. so that's what we're gonna do. So each time um, a cell equals a certain ID, like right here, I'll zoom in a little bit. So each time a cell equals a certain ID, then we append to the array. So all we need to do after that is just return the array of 3D vectors, and bam, we got our function done. It's actually pretty simple. So that's, I think that's basically how the get use cells by ID function works. I'm not sure, I haven't looked up the C code, or the C++ code in the source, but yeah. So let's see, um, so use our get use cells by ID, all you need to do is make a variable, maybe call it enemies, and say it equals to get use cells by ID, 
and then pass in the right ID. But right now we do not have our mesh library set up to accommodate this, so we need to set it up. So here's our mesh library. And what I gotta do right here is make a couple bull crap or placeholder meshes just that will be replaced and will be replaced by whichever type of like 3D scene we want. So it doesn't matter if they're mesh, it doesn't matter if they're sprite 3D, it doesn't matter if they're light, it, they could be anything. So next we're gonna make three mesh instances and we're gonna name them player, enemy, and light. So we'll set up our mesh instance and we're gonna make it a one by one by one size. And the next thing we gotta do is we gotta make a new spatial material. And in the albedo section, put the um, texture that we want, and that will pretty much decorate our mesh and tell us that, oh, this is this enemy. See, look, that's that's a brain. You can see a brain right there. That's what my enemy looks like. So it's pretty nice. Doesn't matter where you put the meshes in the mesh library. You just have to make sure that they're nicely organized for yourself. Like I have the normal tiles right there, and then the uh, ones that are going to be instanced right here. Yeah. So I'll get deleted and then replaced. Okay, so so we're gonna do the same thing for the two other instance ones that we're gonna use. One by one by one, albedo, and then bam. And then just like kind of rinse and repeat. So for a light one, I just said is yellow. And for the player one, I'm just gonna put the player's texture and kind of set up similarly to the enemy, but instead it's gonna be the player character that's gonna be controlling that. So bam, there we have all of our meshes. We have a enemy mesh, we have a light mesh and we have a player mesh. I didn't bother putting a picture on this one because we only need to put the color of the light, which is that color, I think. Uh, I'm just going by memory, but it doesn't really matter. But yeah, so bam, player, enemy, light. Okay, before we go back to our scene, we need to convert this to a mesh library. So I'm gonna save it real quick and then convert, mesh library, bam, okay. So we're gonna go back. See, now we have these added. So each of these will have a certain ID, which will be cool. I'll place some of the cells in the grid map and also change some of the light settings so you can see the light better. And yeah, just uh, just adding the level a little bit, doing a little bit of stuff like adding the player, adding that light right there, and then changing the lighting, and then boom. Look. See, now you'll be able to see the lights much better. When you're looking for your IDs, it's best to open up the mesh library in the grid map. So when you go open it up, zero is a normal brick, gray brick, empty brick, so three is the enemy, four is the light, and five is the player. So now I'll put all those IDs into the get use cells by ID function, put them all into three separate variables. So each of these variables contains an array of cells that match the given ID into the get use cells by ID function. So let's say if you have multiple players, this would be pretty useful. Like if you have like some type of multiplayer map, you could just keep changing the spawn points on the fly with the grid map. Let's say you Oh yeah, let, let's say, oh wait, I don't like this spawn point, it's too far away, let's put this spawn point somewhere over here. You know, it, you would definitely have a floor right here, and yeah, so these two at players want to see each other right off the bat, they might have to go through some type of tunnel to actually find each other, to, so that they both have a fine chance. So, we could put multiple lights, let's say two lights, just to showcase this a little bit better. Put two lights over here, and two lights over here, and we could put an enemy right here, we could put like maybe made three enemies just so we're not just using a v array of one element yeah and bam so now we have those three and what we're gonna do next is we're gonna write a function to replace those and let's see say um basic I like naming a basic tile replace because uh, sometimes if you have some special ones you might want to add some additional functionality but this will be this will do um, let me see, we're going to pass in that tile array, so the uh, cell array, I'll name it cell array, type array. Next we'll make an empty vector 3 called cell position that will be used for obtaining a cell's location within the world. And so we're going to iterate through the cell array, um, uh, in cell array. Next, we are going to create a function that will create and return an instance called new object. So, it's good to try and split up the logic so that it's easier to add stuff to the script later. Let's say we want to have a different types of tower place functions. 
like with basic tower place, but maybe you want to add some health to an enemy or something. Make it like they have double health or half health. You know, just like different types. And this makes it much easier because we still want to have the basic functionality of creating a new instance, but maybe with a couple extra like variables added. Like with double health. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to pass in a vector 3 called cell. I accidentally wrote cell array at this point and made it of type array. But just ignore that little piece. Just imagine a cell type vector 3. We're going to also pass a vector 3 in called tile position. Just imagine it being cell position. I don't know. Like the naming is a little off. And we're going to pass in the instance that we're trying to replace. The next thing we're going to do is create a variable called new instance and it's going to get the um, instance of the scene that we're passing in. So here's where the tile position vector 3 comes in handy. We're going to give it the map to world function and uh, first off I need to fix this in the for loop because it wasn't giving me autocomplete but yeah map to world and I'm going to change the array tap to a vector 3 because that's what we need. We don't need an array. So I'm going to change this to an iteration function where we'll say i in cell array. So next we're going to call the new object function and pass in i, cell position, and I'm going to fix these and then we'll pass in the instance. And we're going to change the parameter name from cell array to cell because it's more readable this way. And I'm going to pass in cell.xl.y and cell.z to the map to world function. And that will give us our world position instead of a tile position. And after that we're going to um, set our new instance dot trans was it translation equals to um, cell position and bam. So next we want to delete the cell that is there by passing in the cell dot x cell dot y and cell dot z and then putting negative one as the id that clears whatever's in that spot and we're almost done with the new object function. Now we're going to add the new instance as a child to grid map and return the new instance. Now the reason we want to return the new instance is just in case that in another function besides basic tile replace, let's say we want to change some aspect of it. And yeah, just for now I'll say new var new object equals a new object. And if we wanted to change something like the variable but and new object to for, we could do that. We could do anything basically. We could just do whatever we want with it and make sure that it has all the um, functionality that we want it to. But yeah. So now that we got all that done, what we're going to do is we're going to finally replace all these with our actual instances. So all we need to do for that is just use the basic tower place and use our enemies. I'll do it in the same order. Enemy. And bam. So we're passing in our instance right here. And then that gets passed into that, and that gets replaced at each spot that it's taken up. And our enemies is our array of spots that are taken up, and yeah. So we just need those two pieces of information, and we got our basic tower place. Yeah. So basic tower place, so lats, and then lat source, and basic tower place, and then um, player. Player. Okay. So just like that. Now we got everything replaced in our level. So let's run this. There. See, look. They're all working. It's pretty sweet, huh? We got our lights working. We're actually controlling our player, even though I actually didn't put that anywhere in our level right here. And yeah. And here's our enemies. They're all going around. Bam. I think I died. I have set a health variable and it reloads if you die. Yeah, I'll do some more of that later. But yeah, here's kind of like how my game's working right now. And what's nice about this is if you ever want to add any enemy, you don't have to worry about like, or if you want to delete an enemy in a certain spot and then move them, all you need to do is remove them from that cell and then put them in a different cell. It's pretty nice. You don't have to worry about looking up through the scene tree or anything. You just have to look them up in the actual tile map. But yeah. So it's just kind of like an isometric game. It's pretty sweet. It is actually 3D too. So that's how you replace, um, that's how you instance things with the grid map. It, was, it took me a little bit of researching 
And but I did find out that yeah, you just gotta get used to those by ID, which is an added thing. Uh, I'll show one of my other projects how I do it. And the 2D tile map, just to showcase this. Okay, let's see. Where did I, where the hell did I put this? Okay. Let's see, chapter one or maybe. Okay, right here. So here's the example. Wow, I forgot how to use some of this. But yeah. Okay, so here's floors and walls. And basically what I did with walls is that's where you put all the enemies. So I just put like a little like picture. Whenever you place these, it'll put new enemies in. So let's see. I don't have my player loaded up anymore. I don't know how the hell that happened. But yeah. So boom, you can shoot at them, and yeah. So this is what I'm kind of got to do with my 3D game. But I just got tired of working in 2D because you don't have that fake Z axis, or you don't have that Z axis. But yeah, I want to jump and stuff. Okay, right, so that like uh, here's how it works in the old one. See right here, it's actually a bit more simple because you don't need to. Yeah, you don't need to get get you cells by ID, so that's already built in to the 2D uh, tile map. But yeah, so that's way nicer when you start thinking about it. And it sucks that they don't have that for the grid map. I really don't know why. The grid map is starting to seem a little bit underdeveloped in a lot of areas. Just, but yeah. But for now, this is pretty sweet. What you could do is you could just like put stuff in the grid map without having to put anything into a scene tree. And yeah, it just looks a lot nicer. And it's a lot easier to edit and um, make changes to your level this way. Yeah. So have a good one.